hundreds of millions of people around the world are suffering under extremely high temperatures as heat waves persist across the northern hemisphere. Right now, there are heat domes over large parts of the U.S., Europe, North Africa, and Asia. A heat dome occurs when high pressure circulation in the atmosphere traps heat at the surface and can create persistent heat waves. The World Meteorological Organization says global heat waves are continuing to grow in frequency, duration, and intensity, consistent with the science of global warming. These are not your normal weather systems of the past. They have arrived as a consequence of climate change. You are losing the North Pole ice and that is reinforcing that mechanism. It will continue and it will continue for some time. The WMO warning heat waves are amongst the deadliest natural hazards with tens of thousands of people dying each year. It says heat waves in Europe last summer caused the deaths of more than 60,000 people. And this year, heat records are being set in Spain, Italy and France. In the U.S., Phoenix, Arizona broke a heat record from half a century ago, with temperatures reaching above 110 degrees Fahrenheit for the 19th straight day. Joining us now to talk about this extreme heat is scientist and climate change expert David Pearson. David, Europe is on its way to breaking a heat record as temperatures could soon reach over 48 degrees there. What are the factors contributing to this relentless heat? Well, I was looking at the pattern of the jet stream over Europe um, this morning. And if uh, you think of the Mediterranean as sort of like a hot um, bathtub of water, uh, the jet stream was um, blowing, and it, it's a wind that blows from, uh, from west to east, and it was very, very uh, curved, allowing water from the Mediterranean area to spread over uh, northern Europe, over uh, Italy and on into, uh, into northern Europe. And part of what people have to remember is that you know 90 percent, 90 percent, nine tenths of the warming that the Earth is experiencing is is in the oceans. It's not in the land at all. What are the concerns about having our oceans warm up like this? Well, the concerns are twofold. First of all, uh, the uh, the warmer water makes it um, a difficult environment for many of the the fish and the creatures and the corals and and thousands of other organisms that live in the uh, the shallower waters of the oceans that become warmer, becomes inhospitable for them. But also the carbon dioxide that is the cause of, uh, of global warming is, is also being absorbed in the oceans. And carbon dioxide turns the oceans into a more acidic uh, water, a more acidic environment. And that's part of what's beginning to bleach corals. Do you suspect these very hot summers will keep getting hotter year after year? Well, that's what uh, specialists, the scientists who um, are conducting what are called attribution studies. In other words, is it climate change that's um, causing the, uh, the extreme weather? The consensus is building that, yes, uh, we, um, we're seeing the effects of climate change, not just natural variation in the climate, which has always been, of course, but um, the climate change is, is really now beginning to bite and that um, it, it will not get better uh, until we make a change in the, uh, the gas pollution that we're putting into the, uh, the atmosphere. What's your biggest fear when it comes to climate change and how do we change the course we're on? Well, the, the second part of your question, how do we change the course that we're on? We need to, to reduce the polluting gases, the carbon dioxide, but it's not just carbon dioxide that we're putting into the atmosphere. There's some other uh, greenhouse gases as well, but we have to cut the, the pollution that we're putting into the atmosphere. There is no question about that. And one of the ways that we have to do that is to change the way that we're generating energy. Uh, and we have to change it fast enough to make a difference. And we're talking here about, um, about not ourselves, the, the adults of the, uh, the world at the moment, but the children and our grandchildren. It's, it's for them that we need to make those, those, uh, those changes. 
my fear is that we won't see enough change to make a difference for my children and my grandchildren. And for the next um, next two or three generations and, and where that will take us is um, is 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 really quite quite scary. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us, David Pearson. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure.